We often think of shipwrecks as being remote or lost forever, but it may surprise you to learn that there are some wrecks that you can easily visit without even needing to get your feet wet. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm your friend Mike Brady from Ocean Liner Designs, and these are the incredible true stories of some interesting and amazing shipwrecks that anybody can visit. HMS J7. The J7 was a British submarine built by the Royal Navy during the First World War. In 1914, the British Admiralty received disturbing reports of a new German submarine which was much faster than the British vessels and capable of reaching speeds of up to 22 knots. This would make the U-boats a deadly enemy that would be capable of travelling alongside the German surface fleets and hunting down British shipping. The rumours were frightening enough for the Royal Navy to put work into building a new class of submarine capable of matching the German threat. Now, these reports would later turn out to be completely false, but this was wartime, and the idea of a new submarine was still very popular, and the J-Class was born from it. Seven boats were constructed, with the J-7 being commissioned into the Royal Navy in September 1917. She was initially used in patrolling the North Sea, based out of Northumberland. Despite numerous encounters with German submarines, she would never fire a shot in anger, and would never be fired upon in the course of her service. Following the end of the war in November 1918, the Admiralty gifted the six remaining J-Class submarines to Australia as it was felt that they would be best of use in protecting the Pacific rather than European waters. The J-Class submarines were gratefully accepted at first. However, they arrived in Australia in very poor condition and their new designs meant that they were more expensive to maintain than other boats. They quickly became seen as something of a white elephant for the Australian government which was made worse by a recession following the end of the war. The submarines were placed in the Naval Reserve in 1922, when they would remain for the next seven years. And finally, in 1929, the J-7 was sold and gutted. The next year, 1930, she was sunk to be used as a breakwater in the Sandringham Yacht Club in Melbourne, my hometown, where she still remains. Now the J-7 being used as a breakwater meant that she was located just a short way away from the shore where the yacht club was built. However, it's been almost a century since the small club received its new submarine and it's since expanded out into the waters, adding new docks and a stone marina. Not wanting to disturb this fairly incredible submarine wreck that lay within sight of their club, the new additions were simply built around the wreck of the J-7 and they didn't have it removed. As such, the submarine is now located right among the other boats of the Yacht Club instead of being out to sea, and it's fully accessible on foot and requires only entrance to the club to have a look. I used to go and see it as a kid. The wreck has deteriorated since it was placed there almost a century ago, but it remains recognisable as a submarine, even in its decayed state, and remains an incredible attraction in the Melbourne area. Eduard Bolin and the Skeleton Coast The Skeleton Coast is a region of Namibia, Famous for its treacherous waters, and named for the ghostly skeletons of the shipwrecks that poke out of its sands. In this area there lies the decaying husk of the Eduard Bolin, an old German passenger and cargo ship that was wrecked here way back in 1909. Eduard Bolin first began plying the route between Germany and West Africa in 1891, when she became the first German steamship to transport mail between the Metropole and the Colony. She was then sold to the Belgians before being sold Back to German owners again, to 1904, the Herero Uprising began in Namibia, and the German authorities used the Eduard Bolin as a prison ship to keep rebels they had captured in Namibia. Unsure of what to do with the prisoners, the Germans offered to, quote, lease the hundreds of prisoners to a South African labour contractor who essentially used them as slave labour for work in his mines. Thus the Eduard Bolin served practically as a slave ship for a brief time in 1904, she continued her work around the coast of Namibia for the next five years until, in 1909, she ran aground atop a sandbar while in heavy fog. And despite the best efforts of the crew and the other ships to rescue the stranded vessel, it was stuck fast in the sand and the crew was forced to abandon it. Immediately, sand began to settle around the ship and within a few days it was possible to walk from the shore to the ship's location at low tide. The desert sands of Namibia crept further and further into the ocean which meant that the ship inched day by day further from the sea and the possibility of rescue. The wreck was briefly used as a camp by diamond miners in the area, and the manager of the mine took over the captain's quarters of the ship. However, 
the Edward Boland was finally left abandoned in the desert. The ship now lies more than 400 metres from the shoreline in a testament to the extraordinary natural forces that have carried her so far from the proper place in the ocean. If you want to visit the Edward Boland, then there are a few options available to you, though none are particularly easy. The ship lies in a protected area and is surrounded by sand dunes, so it's not possible for someone to just go there. The first option is to take part of one of the guided four-wheel drive tours through the area. These tours are across the entire coast, and the Edward Boland is one stop along the way. The next option is to take a scenic flight along the Namibian coast. The Edward Boland is a popular attraction among these. Finally, there are hiking tours that run through the area, if for some reason you feel particularly like wandering through the desert for 100 kilometers or so. I think it's absolutely worth it though, because the sight of a stranded Edwardian ship is truly remarkable. The Omeo. The Omeo was an iron screw steamer built in Newcastle in 1858. She enjoyed a long career carrying cargo around the world, including across the Pacific and Indian Oceans, and traveling as far as Japan on her routes from Britain. In the September of 1895, she arrived in Hamelin Bay in Western Australia with cargo and passengers. But little did her crew know that this would be her last voyage as a true cargo vessel. Because while in Hamelin Bay, she ran aground after being loaded with timber and destroyed part of the jetty. Omeo was refloated, but enough damage had been done that it wasn't seen as worthwhile to try to get her seaworthy again. The Hulk was sent to Fremantle to serve as a floating warehouse, and it was used to service steamers from the Blue Star Line for the next 10 years. But after that, she was made redundant again and left to rot on her moorings at own anchorage. Having been abandoned by her owners, the mooring lines that kept her on the dock broke free in September 1905 and she drifted onto Coogee Beach in Perth. Sand quickly built up around the wreck, making another attempt to refloat her would have been pointless. And as such, she stayed on that beach for over a century and has remained a popular site for locals and tourists ever since. As the decades have gone on though, the once isolated beach she found herself stranded on has become a more significant site. The area became industrialised as the 20th century went on, and factories appeared on the beaches around it. One abattoir in the area chose to simply build its outlet pipe through the remains of the Omeo itself. All of this ended up changing the level of sand around the ship, and once again it has found itself in the water, but just barely. Today, the Omeo is located about 30 metres off the beach and lies submerged in about 2 to 4 metres of water, depending on the time of day. The ship is available for anyone willing to swim out to it, and lies in beautifully clear waters just off the beach. Snorkeling is a popular way to see the wreck, it also lies on the Coogee Maritime Trail, along with about 55 other sites around the beach. To reach it, you'll definitely need either a boat or be willing to make a short swim from the shore, but when the waters are calm, most people shouldn't have any trouble. Becoming a popular tourist attraction isn't exactly a bad end for a ship that was abandoned multiple times in its life, and it's today one of the hidden gems of that region. The Cemeterio de Navios The Cemeterio de Navios, or the ship cemetery in the town of Panguila in Angola, is a vast collection of abandoned vessels just north of the Angolan capital of Luanda. This eerie landscape is dotted with the remains of more than 50 derelict ships sitting either abandoned on the beach or lying just offshore in the water. The most famous of these is the Karl Marx, a massive oil tanker which was once the pride of the Angolan merchant navy, but today lies abandoned on the shores. The area is a relatively popular destination for tourists, but the beach also remains very much a functioning area for local businesses. Fishermen continue to ply the waters and locals still throng the beaches, doing their best to avoid the wrecks. As such, if you happen to find yourself in Angola, it wouldn't be out of the question to simply rent a car and drive there for yourself. The wrecks lie all along the beach, and if you were to go, you'd be all but guaranteed to bump into at least one of them. Demetrios The Demetrios was a Danish ship built in 1950 as the Klintholm later changed its name to the Demetrios when she was purchased by the Greek firm Ammonia Shipping Co. in 1966 and had its registry changed to Piraeus. Under these new owners, she would see another 14 years of service as a small general cargo carrier, mostly operating in the eastern Mediterranean. However, the owners also didn't take as much care of the ship as they probably should have. Essential maintenance was ignored, and fees weren't paid on time. Because of this, the ship ended its long career abandoned on a small beach in Greece, where it remains to this day. She was stranded on the beach near Githio in Greece on the 23rd of December 1981. 
She was believed to have been smuggling cigarettes between Greece and Turkey when she was abandoned, and as the story goes, in December 1980, the captain was forced to seek port in Githio due to a medical emergency on board his vessel. Once it was docked, however, the ship encountered numerous issues. The Dimitrios had been poorly maintained, its hull and engines, and the ship was apparently unable to pay its fees, and as such, the crew was fired in the port and the ship was assigned to the port authorities. It stayed abandoned in that port for almost a year when it was finally declared unsafe because water was spilling into the hull. The Dimitrios' owners were unwilling to take responsibility for their ship, however, and finally, in November 1981, a storm broke the vessel free of its anchors and it was swept out into the bay. The port authorities caught up to her and managed to fit temporary anchors, but in December, those broke too. The ship was washed ashore approximately five kilometres from the town, and it's remained there ever since. No one has ever made any attempt to recover the Dimitrios, and by now her hull has decayed so much that there's really no chance of refloating her. The ship is easily accessible on foot, as it lies directly on the beach. The sand reaches close enough that someone would have no trouble getting right up close and touching the thing if they wanted to. Naturally, you probably shouldn't try to climb aboard a 40-year-old rusting wreck. They aren't exactly the safest things in the world, but it's definitely an interesting sight to see if you should happen to find yourself in that part of southern Greece. The beach that the ship lies on is accessible by both road and foot from the town, though it might be a bit far for a casual walk in the hot sun. Nevertheless, it's easy enough to reach the side of the ship, and it's actually covered in graffiti today. If someone can dangle from the side of a decaying and rusting wreck for the sake of spray painting a sentence, you could probably manage the walk. Ladies and gentlemen, it's your friend Mike Brady from Ocean Liner Designs. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a comment below. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel because we get new videos out weekly. If you want to support my work and get really cool perks like behind the scenes and early access, please visit my Patreon in the link in the description below or sign up as a YouTube member. Come and join the crew. And as always, stay safe, stay happy. And I'll see you again next time.